Chapter 7 I couldn't waste another second. The leopard seal was going in for the kill. I had to warn the others. Dorothy Ann! Tim! Carlos! I started to scream their names one by one. The words came out of my bill like a loud braying sound. I was talking and braying at the same time. I hopped up and down on the icy cliff and kept braying. Finally, D.A. saw me. Right away, she knew something was wrong. She took off for the cliff, waving her flipper at the others. The other kid penguins shot through the water after her. With their black backs turned to the sea, the penguins were hard to see in the water. The seal lost sight of them. It stopped swimming and searched the water. By the time it had found D.A. again, she was leaping from the water up onto the ice shelf. Dorothy Ann gave a bray of relief. Arnold, Keisher, Carlos, Tim, Wanda, and Ralphie all hopped up onto the cliff. Everyone was happy to get back onto safe ground. Wow, that was close, Dorothy Ann said. It's a cold, cruel world out there. Tim added, we hung out on the cliff for a while. There were hundreds of Adelie penguins around us. They gave us some strange looks, but otherwise ignored us. You know what I think is weird, Carlo said. What? Wanda asked. What's really weird is the smell, Carlo said. What smell? Wanda asked. That's what I mean, Carlo said. I don't even smell the guano anymore. Maybe, maybe we're not human anymore, Wanda said with a sniffle. What if we never get back to the magic school bus, Arnold asked. I tried to think of something hopeful to say. Miss Frizzle will save us, and Uncle Cecil, I told Arnold, you just wait and see. Meanwhile, Dorothy Ann said, Let's check out some penguin nests. I still want to see a chick hatch. As usual, Dorothy Ann's mind was on science. We waddled over to where dozens of penguins were babysitting their eggs. Two of the penguins seemed to be having a fight. Look, one is stealing a rock from the other one, Wanda said. Penguins do that, Dorothy Ann explained. I read that we have to compete for the best nesting sites. What do you mean? We, Wanda asked. Oh, right. I mean, they, Dorothy Ann corrected herself. Just then, a female Adelaide penguin got off her nest. She waddled up to Arnold. She barked some orders at him in penguin language. Arnold just stared at her. Then she took her flippers and pushed him toward the nest. No, no, Arnold protested. You've got the wrong guy. I'm not your mate. The female penguin didn't pay any attention to Arnold's noises. She made him sit on top of her egg. Then she waddled away toward the water. She threw back a warning glance at Arnold not to move. Looks like you can't get up until your wife gets back, Arnold, Tim said. You better keep those eggs nice and toasty, Carlos said. Then he laughed until he brayed. You'd better not leave me, Arnold begged, please. It looked as if we were stuck, babysitting a penguin egg. But when would the mother come back? Hey, Arnold, last one, there's a rotten egg. Meanwhile, back at the camp, Miss Frizzle was measuring the ice caps and taking notes. She saw Uncle Cecil come slipping and sliding across the ice. The look on his face smelled trouble. Cecil, the frizz gasped, what's the matter? My experiment backfired, Uncle Cecil moaned. I turned the kids into penguins. How did you do that? Miss Frizzle asked with a worried look on her face. 
I squirted them with my top secret formula. Uncle Cecil explained. It was all an accident, but now they're penguins, and I can't find them anywhere. Miss Frizzle thought for a moment. We've got a penguin puzzle that we have to solve. Then she added, maybe it takes one to know one. You mean, you mean I should turn into a penguin? Uncle Cecil stammered. Do you have enough secret formula left? The frizz asked. A whole bottle, Uncle Cecil answered. Hand it over, Miss Frizzle ordered, and get ready to waddle. Uncle Cecil took the last bottle of formula out of his briefcase. He handed it to Miss Frizzle and shut his eyes. So seconds later, a large emperor penguin stood in front of the frizz. Liz took one look and jumped inside the frizz's parka pocket. Is that you, Cecil? Miss Frizzle asked in amazement. From Cecil's Penguin Papers, the Emperor of Penguins. The Emperor Penguin is the biggest penguin of all. It grows up to 3.7 feet tall and can weigh more than 60 pounds. That's about half the size of a human adult. Emperor penguins are the only penguins that breed during the cold, dark winter in Antarctica. After the female lays a single egg, she goes off to the sea. The male stays on land with the egg. He keeps it warm on his feet under a brood pouch for 72 days. The emperor males huddle together with their eggs for warmth and protection. They take turns being on the warm inside and the cold outside of their huddle. These dedicated dads live off stored fat during this time and lose about half of their body weight. I think so, Uncle Cecil's voice said. Then it turned into a penguin bray. Good luck, the phrase called as Uncle Cecil waddled off. Uncle Cecil headed toward a crowd of Adelie penguins. Phoebe, he called out, Arnold, Dorothy Ann, Carlos. None of the penguins answered to the names. Uncle Cecil walked from one group of the penguins to another. He had to fight off the urge to take a dip in the ocean. He knew he had to keep his penguin's mind on the kids. Just then, he walked by the Adelie penguin nest. A little Adelie chick was being fed by its parents. Uncle Cecil took mental notes to add to his research. From Cecil's Penguin Papers, Adelie Baby Food. Adelie parents take turns keeping their chicks warm and fed. While one watches the nest, the other goes into the ocean to catch krill. The penguins carry the krill back to the nest in their stomachs. Then they regurgitate it to feed their chicks. Uncle Cecil wandered through the Adelie colony for an hour. Then he had to give up. There were thousands of Adelie penguins and none of them answered to his call. Slowly he waddled back to camp. He hated to tell Miss Frizzle the news. They might not see Phoebe and the others again, ever.